polarization has reached new heights this week and has launched not only a whole brand new round of gun control talk with clearly ridiculous facts, but also another round of anthrax scares. Oh my god, that is like so 2001. But first, because this has been the most requested story over the last few weeks, I have even more news regarding Evergreen State College, the race war school that just keeps on giving. This week, the chaos of Evergreen was joined by Antifa, as if things couldn't get any crazier over there. But how did this happen, you ask? Well, because a free speech rally was slated to happen on Thursday, and free speech rallies just attract anti-fa like communist moths to a flame. The rally was organized by a pro-Trump group called Patriot Prayer in response to, well, everything about Evergreen you've seen in my last couple videos. About 100 counter-protesters showed up, along with state police in riot gear. A few faculty members were among the counter-demonstrators, complaining that Evergreen was getting too much attention, apparently forgetting about the angry mob and the false imprisonment, and all those other student actions that typically don't go unnoticed. Not to mention, those same students posted it all over social media, but I guess that's none of my business. <laughs> According to people on site with Patriot Prayer, they were pepper sprayed and glitter bombed in typical Antifa fashion. And instead of U-locks and smoke bombs, Antifa upgraded their weapons to include pine cones. So far, only one arrest was reported after a man attempted to attack Patriot Prayer members with a knife. Patriot Prayer leader Joey Gibson himself was maced and claims that when he tried to shake counter-protesters' hands, they punched him in the face. Which I think is a perfect metaphor for how a lot of these left-leaning groups operate. Because of the demonstrations, the school was shut down for the third time in the last couple weeks. The anti-fog group Puget Sound Anarchists organized the counter rally on a website that was basically one long run-on sentence because proper punctuation and grammar is fascist and a product of white supremacy. And they very clearly know what they're talking about as they claim that 4chan's CAC is basically a white supremacy mating call originally started by Sargon of Akkad that they claim literally calls for the Holocaust. <sighs> I literally can't even. This just has to be why Antifa is so violent, because they know that otherwise no one would take them seriously. But the big story all over the news this week is the Wednesday morning shooting that left Republican and House Majority Whip Steve Calise in critical condition. 21 members of Congress, including Senator Rand Paul and Representative Joe Barton, a Texas Republican, were practicing for a charity baseball game at an Alexandria, Virginia ballpark when the shooting began. Three others were shot including a police officer, a lobbyist who was shot multiple times in the chest and arm, and a legislative correspondent. Witnesses reported up to 50 shots fired before the shooter, 66-year-old James Hodgkinson, was killed. Lucky for those Republicans that Hodgkinson was a very bad shot. Now, investigators claim that they haven't determined a motive, but the guy was found with a hit list in his pocket full of Republican names, volunteered for Bernie Sanders last year, and was very expressive in his anti-Republican sentiments on social media. Hodgkinson also reportedly stopped South Carolina Representative Jeff Duncan, who was on the list in the parking lot, and asked whether the players were Republicans or Democrats that day. He was also part of a Facebook group called Terminate the Republican Party, which celebrated the shooting. Gee, I wonder what the motive could be. He was also one of those guys that capitalized every other word on Facebook. I knew those guys couldn't be trusted. But if none of that was cringy enough for you, the media reports on this are just outrageous. The New York Times, for example, put out a piece about political incitement that blamed Sarah Palin and one of her ads for the 2011 shooting of Gabby Giffords because a picture of her proposed electoral map featured crosshairs. Then we have this gem right here. The difference is a pistol can uh, fire one round at a time, pop. 
pop pop, which is what the Capitol Police were carrying. This individual had a rifle. Semi-automatic means that you can switch it to a point where it fires pop 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 multiple rounds. Some of the lawmakers thought they. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a supposed former Secret Service agent telling NBC viewers that semi-automatic rifles are machine guns. In this case, an SKS specifically is a machine gun. This woman clearly was not hired for her brains. Other news outlets called it a full auto M4 and some did so with a picture of an AR-15 labeled Colt M4. But the best, the absolute best case of willful ignorance in this whole thing came from Virginia's Democratic governor himself. As I have long advocated, uh, this is not what today is about, but there are too many guns on the street. We lose 93 million Americans a day to gun violence. 93 million Americans a day dead from gun violence. But I'm not going to get anywhere near the investigation. The FBI is leading this, but this obviously with 93 million people a day, it's just something. For some perspective here, the U.S. Census Bureau lists the current U.S. population at about 325 million. This means we all have about three days to live. But according to Solana, it's all the gun industry's fault because they promise customers that owning a gun is manly and this shooting was clearly about manliness. Unfortunately, the baseball game was not the only incident of political targeting this week. Georgia is facing a special election for the 6th Congressional District and Republican Karen Handel is running for the seat versus a guy that kind of looks like he's still in high school. I honestly don't know anything about either candidate and probably wouldn't have even looked into it except for the fact that someone apparently sent mail to Karen Handel's entire neighborhood containing an unidentified powdery substance that may or may not have been anthrax. Because we're doing that again. The suspicious envelopes were serious enough that the FBI was called in and the entire neighborhood was shut down for several hours. A Twitter user by the name of Hi Res Mick reportedly got one of the letters which included the message, your neighbor Karen Handel is a dirty fascist cunt, but I'm sure you already knew that. Take a whiff of the powder and join her in the hospital, you bourgeoisie motherfuckers. Resist the fascist takeover, string up the collaborators. Those extra exclamation points really just drive the message home. A similar package was sent to a local Fox station, but that one was determined to be baking soda. And finally, the officer previously charged with manslaughter and reckless discharge of a firearm in the shooting of Minnesota concealed carrier Philando Castile was found not guilty on all charges this week. Officer Geronimo Yanez pulled Castile over for a broken taillight last summer. According to reports, Castile told Yanez he was carrying a firearm. Yanez asked for his license and when Castile reached for his wallet, Yanez shot him seven times. The aftermath of the shooting was caught by Castile's girlfriend, Diamond Reynolds, who also had her four-year-old daughter in the car. Castile's last words were that he wasn't reaching for the gun. The defense argued that due to a positive post-mortem talk screen for pot, that Castile was under the influence and therefore unable to follow instructions. The defense also claimed that the smell of pot plus believing that Castile might be a robbery suspect because of his wide set nose was enough to convince the officer that Castile was a threat. But dash cam footage from the incident shows both Castile and Reynolds assuring the officer that he was reaching for his wallet in order to show his driver's license. Footage shows him driving normally and acting alert and courteous during the stop. The entire exchange lasted about a few seconds. The verdict was reached just one month after Officer Betty Jo Shelby was acquitted of all charges after fatally shooting an unarmed black man last September. 40-year-old Terrence Crutcher had already been tased by another officer when he was shot by Shelby. It is expected that the verdict will likely set a precedence for other high-profile shooting cases that are expected to be heard in the following months. That is your Liberty-related news for the week. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you're over on YouTube or throw me some upvotes if you're over on VidMe. And if you really like my videos and want to help support my channel, you can also help by supporting me over on Patreon. Until next week, thanks for watching and helping me to spread the message of liberty.